G'day everybody, Ryan Higgins here from Mind Movies and I'm very excited today because I've travelled to LA and I'm in a hotel here with Mr. Bob Proctor. Bob, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Uh, now, I'm very excited because I've uh, been watching Bob, as I'm sure many of you have for years. He's a wealth of knowledge on uh, the law of attraction, visualization, and I'm here today to find out exactly what visualization is, why it's so important, and how uh, we can apply it to our lives for maximum benefit. Well, you know, if you think about it for a moment, visualization is where everything starts. That's really, that's, that's the beginning of anything that happens. It all starts with a picture and the picture moves into form. It all happens by law. On the movie, The Secret, I, uh, I quoted Dr. Werner von Braun, where he said, the natural laws of the universe are so precise that we don't have any difficulty building spaceships, sending people to the moon, and we can time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. Well, one of the laws, uh, one of the great laws, is the law of perpetual transmutation of energy. Energy is forever moving into form. If we just look up into the skies, we see blue sky, just a nice clear sky, and then you'll see a cloud formation. And the cloud starts to get heavier and it gets darker, and out of the cloud comes the water. Where did it come from? Well, it started out non-physical, turns into physical. Well, you and I have been given creative faculties. Unlike any other form of animal life, we're the highest form of creation on the planet and we've been given creative faculties where well, we've got the ability to create vision or an image in our mind. Like imagination is the mental faculty out of which visions arise. Now, unfortunately, as kids, we treat imagination as it's something just for kids. Um, and when you start to school, you know, boom, they put stop on it, stop daydreaming. Well, what, what the child is actually doing is exercising one of the most powerful faculties that, uh, that we've been given. We've got these higher faculties, but we don't understand that. And so everything you see, the buildings you see, the uh, cars, the clothes you're wearing, the microphone, the camera that we're shooting, at, it, it's all started out as an image in somebody's mind. And then we start communicating. Think for a moment of just how a person is looking at us right now and they can hear us, all right? So we're sending our voice just off through the medium of the molecule. We're sending our image, our likeness, just off through the medium of the molecule. There are no wires between you and I and uh, the viewer that you're watching us right now. How did that all happen? Well, you see, Samuel Morris was taken before the United States Congress many, many years ago. And he had an idea, he thought, if we could take and string wires and stop and start the flow of energy, we could communicate through the use of a wire. And a senator stood up in Congress, he was trying to get $30,000 to string up some wires down around Maryland and test this. And there was a senator stood up in Congress and said they'd be further ahead to give uh, somebody $30,000 to build a railroad to the moon. <laughs> you know, it shows you how far he went. Now, when Samuel Morris or, you know, was shot down, Marconi came up with the idea he was going to send a message from one place to another without using any wires. They checked him out in a mental institution. So whenever there's been any breakthroughs like this, we've always put the people down. It makes resistance initially. That's exactly right. Now, what we've got here is a relatively new idea. We think Samuel Morris could do it. Now, we think Marconi, after the breakthrough, they're the genius. We always see the genius in somebody else, never in ourselves. Well, what we're talking about here is an individual has the ability to build this image in their mind. And I think one of the great problems, Randy, is that people don't understand their mind. They don't understand how mind works. They think it's for psychiatrists or something like that. Mind movies is, is taking people into an area of themselves that they've maybe never gone. Right. And as I look at this, I'm blown away with what, you, what you've done. But if I was to turn this thing around, you had to start out, this whole concept had to be an image in your mind. Yeah. Or a vision, if you want, you call it an image, a vision, a picture, call it whatever you want. When you're talking about mind movies, that's really what it's all about. How did you start the whole thing? You must have started it with a picture. 
I did. I actually, I, uh, what I wanted to do was I, I wanted to create a, a dream board. And I'd heard of the law of attraction before seeing, seeing you in The Secret. But once I watched The Secret, that's when I really grasped the importance of it. And I'd spent a lot of time and energy developing my skill set in uh, lots of different areas for business such and entrepreneurship. But I hadn't had the breakthrough I wanted. In fact, quite the opposite. I was uh, working in a factory uh, doing a job I really, really did not like. Um, I mean, I got up at 5 a.m. every morning, and I deliberately chose this job so I can go and get up at 5 a.m., uh, do this work. I could be home by 1 or 2 in the afternoon, and I could start my business in the afternoon. And But I did this for years and years with no result. And I decided that uh, what I was missing was the concept of visualization and a crystal clear picture of what I wanted my future to look like. But you must have read something about this. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, and I'd been to a number of seminars and read a number of books. Because I don't think you just decide you're missing a vision. No, no, that came through education, through teachers like it's yourself. It's an awareness. And, exactly. Yeah. So once I had that, I thought, okay, how can I do this? And I started off with a dream board. I cut out pictures and put it up just behind my computer. And it, it just didn't excite me. I thought, this, this is a problem um, because I'm looking at my dreams and goals and it's not really exciting me. And I'm thinking... I got, I'm not sure if I read it or if I just felt it, but emotion is very, very important to connect emotion to these visions. Is that right? Well, absolutely. See, the vision you build in your conscious mind, it's built with your imagination. It's the imagination, you've got imagination, perception, the will, reason, intuition. These are all higher faculties. We've been raised to live through our senses. We go by what we see, hear, smell, taste, touch. So we're letting the present control our mind. Yeah. But the imagination is the, that's the mental faculty out of which visions arise. That's in the conscious mind. The subconscious is the emotional mind, but that's also universal intelligence. So when you turn your vision over to your emotional mind, you're connecting up to the entire universe. And that's the part that the average individual on the street just doesn't get. Right. And I believe, it's, it's my personal belief. Now keep in mind that I started to study this. 50 years ago. So you study anything for 50 years, even if you're a little slow, you're going to learn something. <laughs> well, you know, I'm of the opinion if a person would use this, what you're creating, and even if they don't believe in it, yep. use it anyway. Like m my attitude is, if your way's not working, try mine. Yep. You know, like I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm wealthy. I earn more money in an hour than I used to earn in 20 years. I mean, I must know something. Well, I do know that this works. And so if a person would take this and start to play with it and start to play with it, pretty soon something's going to click in their mind like it did for you, and they've got it. So when you talk about your emotions, what you're really talking about is universal intelligence. You're really talking about that part of us, that's where the spiritual essence of our our self takes over, and spirit always operates by law. It never operates other than perfectly. And so when you turn